Hey everybody, this is AncientOrigins.net, and this story came out today, and I think I'll just read. It is entitled Thoth, Hermes Trismegistus, and his Ancient School of Mysteries. It says, Thoth, Hermes Trismegistus, is portrayed by the Egyptians as the moon god with the body of a man, head of an ibis, and a crescent moon over his head. His symbol was the winged serpent staff. He was the god of wisdom, letters, and time. But he was not only known to the Egyptians, to the Sumerians he was Ningizida. He may have been Enoch to the Jews, Odin to the Scandinavians, Wotan to the Teutons, and some even suggest Buddha. Before he was revered as a god, he was the first great Egyptian philosopher and founder of the ancient mystery schools, receiving his wisdom while in meditative trances, writing over 40 books, allegedly including the Emerald Tablets, the Book of Thoth, and others. And here is a reconstruction of what the Emerald Tablet may have looked like. It says, The topics he covered range from medicine, chemistry, law, art, music, rhetoric, magic, philosophy, geography, mathematics, and others. To the Egyptians, his knowledge was so vast and all-encompassing that he first began to, they first began to credit him as the communicator with the gods, eventually inducting him into the Egyptian pantheon. Whether or not one agrees his hand is the hand that penned the books attributed to him, a quick perusal or in-depth study resounds in most readers due to the similarity with Buddhism and Christianity. Perhaps the clearest examples are his teachings on reincarnation and the creation of the world. Here you see a common depiction of Thoth. It says, Nothing is for certain about the Book of Thoth other than the fact that it was written in Egyptian hieroglyphics. It was kept in a golden box in the inner sanctuary of the temple, and only the highest initiate of the Hermetic Arcanum Mystery School had the key to it. It is said that the book described the key to immortality, the process achieved through awakening certain areas of the brain, similar to the Buddhist monk's practices. Gardner and others claim that the awakening of the brain was achieved through meditation, the use of a white powder, and the priestess's sacred essence. The most powerful key, the, or the most powerful of the mystery schools, was known as the Royal School of the Master Craftsmen at Karnak, founded by Pharaoh Tutmosis III. Though, as with all mystery schools, it is commonly believed that the true founders resided in Sumeria, emigrating to Egypt, which ties it to Sitchin's claim that Enki and his sons as, had Egypt as their domain, and that is highly debatable. This school was also known as the Great White Brotherhood due to the members' choice of white robes and their dedication to producing a white powder known to the Mesopotamians as Shem Ana, the high ward firestone or white bread to the Egyptians. Pictures of it pictures of it show it being offered to the pharaohs in the shape of a cone. And this is the conical bread that we get from the uh, Bible story and others. It says, Petri discovered on the top of Mount Sinai an Egyptian temple which contained a bewildering discovery. Laying some inches deep beneath heavy flagstones in a storeroom was a considerable supply of the finest pure white un unadulterated powder. Copper smelting and animal sacrifice were qu quickly ruled out. Some of the mysterious white powder was taken back to Britain for analysis and examination, but no re results were ever published. The rest was left open to the elements after 3,000 years to become victim of the desert wind. What has become apparent, however, is that the powder was seemingly identical to the ancient Mesopotamian firestone, or Shemana, the, sub the substance that was made into bread cakes and used to feed the Babylonian kings and the pharaohs of Egypt. This, of course, explains the temple inscriptions denoting the importance of bread and light, while the white powder has been identified with the same with a sacred manna that Aaron placed in the Ark of the Covenant. And this story of Petri discovering an Egyptian temple on the top of Mount Sinai, well, Mount Sinai is referred to as Mount Horeb in its last uh, mention in the Bible. And this is uh, just a clue by the writers of the Bible of what was actually going on here. He's on the top of Mount Horeb, which is taken for the biblical Mount Sinai sometimes, <clears throat> what they did find was an Egyptian temple with the inscription 
uh, cut into a stone of Pharaoh Tutmos IV receiving these conical cakes. And I have always said that Tutmos IV was the biblical Moses, and here we have a temple on top of the biblical Mount Sinai uh, to some people, showing an image of Tutmos IV receiving these conical cakes. And it is fairly similar to this, but just further proof uh, what I believe that Tutmos IV was the biblical Moses because the temple on top of Mount Sinai has him receiving these conical cakes, Tutmos IV. Just another connection there. But back to this, it says, eventually the mystery schools went into decline as a new dynasties emerged. The initiates left Egypt and brought back and brought the Book of Thoth to, to another land. Where it is now, no one knows, though supposedly the chain of succession of the Grand Master since Thoth has remained unbroken. The Rosicrucians are said to be descended from his school, while the Freemasons are descended from the school founded by Solomon. And I'm going to be talking about the Rosicrucians in a later video. I have found some very interesting information that ties into some other things I have talked about. It says, as for Thoth, he has remained revered by philosophers, occultists, alchemists, and healers through the ages, though many of the texts accredited to him were lost in the great fire of the Library of Alexandria. Who knows how different history might have been had the knowledge contained in that library had not been lost. And uh, that's where I say the mystery schools originated, is from the Library of Alexandria, Plato, and other philosophers studied there, and the Book of Thoughts were definitely housed there. But uh, I just thought I would bring you this story about Thoth and a little bit of history. But this is Thoth, Hermes Trismegistus, and his ancient mystery schools. This came from ancientorigins.net. I'll leave the link below. Have a nice day and happy Valentine's Day to those who actually celebrate it.